there's a political calculation in the White House that since the Republican senators, that since Donald Trump had shot down the bipartisan bo uh, border bill, that now it was okay to call a crisis because now they had a villain. I see, someone now, to blame it now on. Now they had a, a villain, a, a Trump to blame it on. And now that they could blame it on Trump, now they could acknowledge it was a crisis. So that is the cynical explanation. But the real explanation is, is Biden's catch and release border policy. Welcome to The Debrief, where we talk with the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the headlines they're covering and where the story's going next. I'm Sarah Budford, and I'm here with commentary editor Con Carroll. Con, you noted this week that DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas acknowledged during congressional hearing that migration on the southern border is in fact a crisis. This was apparently a shift, uh, and there is no starting point for this shift, as you point out. Right. Well, I'm... I was kind of. I was happy that the Republicans on the committee did ask him about this, about whether it's a crisis. It's, it's a it's a theater that plays out. Every time Mayorkas goes to testify, they bring him up. They ask him, "Is it a crisis?" Mm -hmm. He always says, "No, it's a challenge," and and then they move on. But this time, he he changed his answer. He said, "Yes." He finally acknowledged it was a crisis. Now. This was new for Congress, but it wasn't the first time he acknowledged it was a crisis period. Mm -hmm. uh, he was on Meet the Press in February, on February 11th, and on that episode of Meet the Press, that was the first time he admitted in public that the southern border was in crisis. But what's interesting about that is that it was a change. Mm -hmm. Not more than nine days earlier, in an interview with the New York Times, he specifically denied that the southern border was a crisis. And then going back from that, he you, there's multiple media appearances, uh, stretching back to right after he was... Um, uh, sworn in to office. Uh, there was a White House press briefing that March, so March 2021, and he was specifically asked, is the board in crisis? And he said no. And so that was his petition from March 2021 up until February 11th, 2024. So at some point between those two dates, mm -hmm. the border went into crisis. And why? And I think the American people deserve answers. When did the border go into crisis? During those dates. And why did it go into crisis? Mm -hmm. Could the answer be the poll numbers showing <laughs> that people believe it's a crisis? <laughs> well, I think the very cynical answer is that um, there's a political calculation in the White House that since the Republican senators, that since Donald Trump had shot down the bipartisan bo uh, border bill, that now it was okay to call a crisis because now they had a villain. I see. Someone now, to blame it now on. Now they had a, a villain, a, a Trump to blame it on. And now that they could blame it on Trump, now they could acknowledge it was a crisis. So that is the cynical explanation. But the real explanation is, is Biden's catch and release border policy. You very excitedly uh, this week at the coffee machine in the break room told me about something called U visas, I this did. new I method did. for undocumented migrants gaining entry into the U.S. Tell us about what a U visa is and some pretty remarkable incidents of abuse of this system. Right, right. So the U visa itself is not new. It's actually 20 years old. Mm -hmm. um, but it's new to me, I suppose, is the better <laughs> way enough, to. Fair enough. Um, so Biden has released literally mm -hmm. millions of illegal immigrants into the country, caught and released them into the country, and many of them are desperate for legal status and, and work permits. So um, what the U visa does, and like I said, it's been around for 20 years, more than 20 years, is it says if an illegal immigrant cooperates with law enforcement to solve a crime, then they are granted a U visa. Um, so this creates some interesting incentives, right? So. Uh, apparently, enough illegal immigrants have figured out this loophole that in Houston, Texas, two illegal immigrants paid a guy to uh, set up a fake robbery uh, so that they could then work with the police and get their U visas. The problem is, when this guy paid another guy to fake rob these two illegal immigrants, a bystander who uh, actually had a gun on parole, so he, was in, he wasn't allowed to have the gun, Whoops. ended up shooting the fake robber and killing him. Mm -hmm. um, and so then the police investigated the whole situation, found out about the link between the guy who paid the fake robber and the guy the legal immigrants hired, and found out that this scam has been run by these two um, guys, the, the, the fake robber and the guy who set it up, at least two other times, resulting in already four U visas granted to illegal immigrants who then worked with the police to try to solve the crime. So, and this was all just from, from one murder that, that happened. We have to ask how much of this U visa fraud is going on. Um, and, and we'll probably never know. Is DHS asking that question, or do you think? No, of course not. No, Biden, no, Biden doesn't care. No. Why, why would I ask? Shifting gears a little bit, uh, you, you wrote this week about sort of anomaly underlying the, the rosy jobs numbers that yes. the Biden White House loves to tout. Not all of the jobs that are created buoying those unemployment numbers are 
full-time jobs. Right. So when you look at the uh, jobs numbers that came out uh, last Friday, mm -hmm. uh, big rosy numbers, 300,000 jobs created. Now that number is taken from the establishment survey, mm -hmm. but in each jobs report, there's actually two jobs reports that are being um, given out. Mm -hmm. One is called the household survey, and that is done by the census, and it basically is a, a huge poll of houses, much larger than your average like political poll, but it's still basically census people calling up and asking people questions they answer the phone. Mm -hmm. The establishment survey is actually the Labor Department going out and talking to businesses and figure out how many, how many people they've hired. So there's been a growing discrepancy between the household survey and how many jobs have been created and how many full-time jobs have been created in the, uh, or backwards. There's been a discrepancy in how many jobs have been in the establishment survey and how many people are saying they have full-time jobs in the household survey. And if you look at the difference in the household survey between a year ago and today, uh, there's actually fewer people with full-time jobs today than there were a year ago at this time. Interesting. All of the rise in jobs in the past year under the Rhode Island's economy have been in part-time jobs. There's more people that claim they have part-time work, but fewer that claim that they have full-time work. So once again, Bidenomics, Bidenomics not all it's cracked not, up to not, be. Yeah, it's just not creating full-time jobs apparently. Well, Khan, thank you so much for being here today. Absolutely. You can get more writing from Khan and the rest of the commentary team at WashingtonExaminer.com.